side. Now the field makes its way into the first turn and emerging with the top. On the far outside, that is Beach Moment. Beach Moment and Tyler Miller blast off from the outside. They make the top. Bura sits along the inside second, followed by I Love on gate in third. Then comes Twin B Sunkist, who races in the fourth spot, followed by Got Sexy Stars, who's away in fifth. Followed by Patty Cake Moose, quarter up in 26 and three fifth seconds. Down the backside, Beach Moment has the lead. Bura is in the second spot, followed by I Love on Gate, who races in third. Then comes Twin B Sunkissed, fourth, Got Sexy Stars is fifth. Patty Cake Moose is sixth, followed by In the Spotlight, seventh. Village Jade is eighth. As they make their way down the backside, Probert races ninth, and the trailer is Dragon's Lucky Lady. They're by the half in a taxing 54 and two. Beach Moment continues on the lead. Bura sitting a perfect pocket trip in the second spot, followed by Twin B Sunkiss, who's living on the outside third. I Love On Gate sneaks along the inside to get a little closer from fourth. Got Sexy Stars swings to the outside fifth. Patty Cake moves from between rivals sixth. Probert along the inside seventh needs some racing room. 122 and one for three quarters. Beach moment, trying to make every call a winning one. Boora up on the outside, second to challenge through the lane. Beach moment, trying to hang in there. Boora up on the outside, now getting to him. Boora moves to the lead. Beach moment back to second. It's going to be Boora. Probert second best in 150 and three. And there they go, Cassie's Believer, the center of the track, tries for the lead. Unstoppable Hall shows good early energy. Shorty's Girl along the inside, followed by Luck Be Mine and Huntersville A. Now the field spins into that first turn, and under a full head of steam, Minnie Rose and Brett Beckwith, they fire to the lead. Unstoppable Hall, race in the second spot, then it's Shorty's Girl in third. Cassie's Believer, left on the outside, racing first over in fourth. As they head for the quarter, Felgon has the cover fifth, quarter up in a quick 27 seconds flat. Down the backside, they're on the way to the half. And on the front end, that is Minnie Rose. Minnie Rose not in a yielding frame of mind. Cassie's Believer is alongside second at challenge, but is not going past. Up on the outside, racing second over is Felgon third. Then comes Unstoppable Hole in fourth. Shorty's Girl races fifth. Then comes Luck Be Mine. Huntersville up on the outside. Bronze Over looking to get into it with some live cover. Followed by Money Make Her Smile. And about a, about a, a length and a half back as they head past the half in 55 and one. That is Minnie Rose on the lead. Now extending to two as Casey's Believer can't keep up on the outside. Unstoppable Hall along the inside. Racing three wide, Felgon now looks to take over second. With that good toe up at the outside, Huntress Ville. Then it's Shorty's Girl from between rivals, Bronze Over. Up on the far outside, Money Maker Smile. 123 and four. But Minnie Rose has given them the slip. Minnie Rose leads it by two and a half or three. They're charging at her though. Felgon's coming. Up on the far outside, Huntersville from between rivals. Bronze over. Minnie Rose, can she last? Here comes Huntersville. Minnie Rose. Huntersville on the outside. Minnie Rose. Huntersville. Moneymaker smile. Oh, Minnie Rose holding on. 153 and two. And there they go. Stable Genius was away to a little bit of a tardy beginning. Jet Rink from the center of the track tries for the lead. Head over boots us. Now scoots along the inside to get the early advantage. Head over boots us. Emerges with the top. Jet Rink races in the second spot. Call me Danny. Ranges up on the outside third. Then back to the rail for full rights who races in fourth. Then comes Interview Fra who races in the fifth spot, followed by Miss Kingham, who races in sixth. Then comes Naranjo in seventh, followed by Blue Bayou Deo. As they make their way down the backside, and it is Call Me Danny, on the lead after a quarter in 27 and three. Head over Boots Oss, now moves again to get the lead. Corey Callahan, very aggressive with Head over Boots Oss. They make the top once again. Call Me Danny back to second, then comes Jet Rink racing third. Full rights is fourth. 
Moving to the outside, interview Fra races fifth. Picking up that live cover, Naranjo is sixth. Then comes Muskingum, followed by Stable Genius, Blue Bayou, and Sid Finch at the end. Path 55 and four. Head over Boots Oss, seven to two, leads it by two. Call me Danny second, gap of two more to Jet Rink third. Making up some ground on the outside. First over is Interview Fra. Off stride up on the outside is Naranjo. From between rivals, here comes Full Rights. Back to the inside for Miss Kingdom. Three quarters and 124 and four. They straighten away. Head over Boots Leads it now by two. Call me Danny could not stay with that one. Ranging up on the far outside. Stable Genius is trotting up a storm. Nearing the wire. Head over Boots Stable Genius is relentlessly closing on the outside. Stable Genius to win it all. 153 and three. And there they go. Lincoln Boulevard shows good early speed. Slick and quick from between rivals. Tyron's bit of lemon. Pack your bags at the rail. Alana's Jojo along the inside. Now they spin into that first turn. And there's Brett Beckwith and Slick and Quick now settling for second behind Tyron's Bit of Lemon, who makes the top. Tyron's Bit of Lemon has the lead. Slick and Quick tries to work his way into that two hole. Pack your bags, races third. Then comes Unsettled Business, who races in the fourth spot, followed by Alana's JoJo up on the outside as they make their way down the back stretch as Lincoln Boulevard, the quarter up in 28 seconds flat. Down the backside, and Tyron's Bit of Lemon has the lead by a little more than a length. Slick and Quick second, followed by Pack Your Bags third. Then it's Unsettled Business, racing in the fourth spot, followed by Alana's JoJo, Lincoln Boulevard living on the outside. Then comes Vel Larry, Stone Cold Savage, Elm Grove Restwind, and Big Idea at the end. The half in 56 and 2. Tyron's Bit of Lemon. On his way to the 5 eighths with the lead by a length and a quarter. Slick and quick. Patiently sits the two hole as they race around that far turn. Making up some ground on the outside. Unsettled business. Moving well on the outside. Pack your bags along the inside. Races in fourth. Then comes Alanis Jojo, who is in the fifth spot. Up on the outside with good cover is Lincoln Boulevard. But they're running out of time and 124 and four for three quarters. And it's down to Tyron's bit of lemon. Slick and quick now moves to the outside. Second, pack your bags back to third. Tyron's bit of lemon nearing the wire. Slick and quick trying to make up ground, but simply cannot do it. Tyron's bit of lemon to win it. Then it was slick and quick second and 152 and four. Equine Award Divisional winners tomorrow. Very much looking forward to joining you on set tomorrow night. But for now, on to the 14th and final on this Friday night. Field of eight, scratch the two. Trotters behind the gate and moving up. Here they come. And there they go. Highland Mowgli pushes the gate away in a minute. Hanover to that one's inside second. Then it's Swan Flyer. Perrin along the inside races in fourth. Now they bank into that first turn and emerging with the front end. That is Highland Mowgli and Jonathan Ali forging to the front. Swan Flyer second in a minute. Hanover races third. Perrin is in the fourth spot driving up on the outside. Here comes Velvet Style. Then comes Chiplosive. Followed by Tachyon, and the trailer is Buddy Earl. Quarter up in 28 seconds flat. Down the backside they go, and forging to the lead. Up on the outside, that's Velvet Style at 60 to 1. Has the point. Now up on the outside, Swan Flyer, Corey Callahan. Make a quick move to get the lead. Swan Flyer has the lead before the half. Velvet Style back to second. Highland Mowgli is in third with in a minute Hanover fourth. Then it's Perrin in fifth. Along the inside, Chip Losev sixth. Then Tachyon seventh. And Buddy Earl the trailer. 56 and one is the half mile time. Swan Flyer has the lead. 
Velvet style the inside second. Highland Mowgli drives up on the outside first over third. In a minute, Hanover looks to keep up with that cover up on the outside second over. Along the inside, Chip Losev. Up on the far outside, three wide. Here comes Tachyon from between rivals Perrin. The trailer is Buddy Earl. They straighten up top of the lane, three quarters, 125 flat. Swan Flyer has the lead by about two lengths. Swan Flyer moving well on the point. Highland Mowgli trying to cut into that advantage. Velvet style at the rail. Down the lane, Swan Flyer and Corey Callahan. They are moving well on the lead. Velvet style second, Chip Losev along the inside. But at the wire, it's all Swan Flyer. Swan Flyer in 153 flat.
Good evening, racing fans, and welcome to Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment. Coming up before our pregame show this evening is the Dan Patch Awards announcements with Dave Little and Jessica Otten. And welcome racing fans to the Sam McKee Memorial Broadcast set here at Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment. I'm Dave Little, joined by my broadcast partner Jessica Otten, and we are tasked with a very special duty this evening. We will be revealing one dozen Dan Patch Award winners. Jess, tell us specifically what we'll be talking about in the next half an hour or so. We are going to be announcing all 12 equine Dan Patch Award winners, trotter spacers, two-year-olds, three-year-olds, and aged horses. Of course, uh, the Oshuans that have a vote were given a ballot a couple of weeks ago and had to turn that in for uh, you know the humans and the horses. There's 129 eligible votes, uh, and we saw a lot of, I think, uh, that could go each way. I think there were a few divisions that people were kind of leaning back and forth towards and tonight we are going to reveal each divisional winner uh, and I'm really honored to be able to do this with you tonight and we're going to talk about each horse a few of their highlighted races uh, their earnings uh, their starts uh, and their their life or their yearly marks and uh, and of course the breeding side of them as well because um, you, you know I think that's something very important for the breeders to get acknowledged and we were actually able to pull out each and every caretaker for all 12 of these horses which I also think is very important yeah without the caretakers where are we in this sport there's no question about that exactly they are they are all unsung heroes i think they kind of get swept under the rug a little bit uh and they're the ones who put in a lot of time and effort as well it's not a nine to five job it's from sun up to sundown each and every day you know seven days a week 365 days a year uh you know when i when i was a caretaker my horses got fed before i got fed and their stalls were clean before my room was clean so we need to really acknowledge them and give them a shout out to keep these horses on their toes all season long you know the trainers manage them but the caretakers are also with them and connect with them and get that bond with them every single day of the year. All right, we have one dozen uh, awards to give out, and we're going to start with the most contested vote on the entire card. Let's start with the two-year-old Trotting Colts. Jessica, take it away. It was um, you know, a very fun division to watch all season long between TCI and Carl. Uh, you know, they were able to face off against each other twice this season. TCI getting up by a nose over Carl, or I guess a half an eyelash over Carl down in Lexington, Kentucky. And Carl came back dominating him in the Breeders' Crown. He dominated him in the Valley Victory Final. He dominated in the Kindergarten Classic Final. And the winner for the two-year-old Colton Gelding Trotter for the 2023 Day Dan Patch Award is Carl. Yeah, Carl, you know, uh, ended the year with wins in the Breeders' Crown, the Kindergarten, and the Valley Victory. As Jessica mentioned, matched up twice with arch rival TCI, uh, a narrow defeat 
his only defeat of the season. And then, of course, that dominant win in the Breeders' Crown, that probably set a lot of voters to say, hey, I think Carl might be just a little bit better than TCI. And, you know, and it's so hard, too, because both trotters had such sensational seasons. You know, TCI going off stride in the Mohawk Million, then Winnie coming back and winning it. But Carl was so quick all season long as well. He had 10 starts on the season, nine of those being wins. The lone loss coming in Lexington, Kentucky to TCI, over a million dollars made. The son of Tactical Landing was driven by Yannick Jingra, trained by Nancy Taxter. Uh, the owners included Christina and Nancy Taxter as well as Crawford Farms, Black Horse Racing, and Bender Sweden, bred by Crawford Farms, taken care of by Miguel Guerrero. And this is how he capped off his season, a solid win in the Valley Victory here at the Big M. Yeah, you know, 10 starts for a two-year-old, and Nancy Tactor had this one firing on all cylinders on that November the 12th night. So clearly, Nancy kept Carl fresh all year long, and, uh, you know, a, a deserved uh, two-year-old trotting cold trophy. But, of course, Carl and TCI, sit atop Ken Barkadin's top 10 in the Hamiltonian winter book. Yeah, we were able to go over that last night as well. Really looking forward to seeing both of those Colts come back next year. I, uh, you know, follow Nancy and both uh, Michelle on Twitter and Facebook, and they've been posting videos and photos of Carl. And just in that few, like, month and a half span, he's grown up so, you know, well, I guess you could say, and he looks uh, tremendous. Really looking forward to seeing how the other one comes back, too. All right, let's move forward and talk about the females, the two-year-old trotting fillies. And the winner is... Soiree Hanover. Soiree Hanover uh, from out of Walner and Spring Gala had a spectacular 2023. The Jim Doherty winner missed a head to Warui Michelle in the Breeders' Crown, making this vote, while not all that close, just a little bit closer. Yes, uh, the leaning money earner in the division for the two-year-old trotting Phillies, as daughter of Walner, had 10 starts on the season, six of those uh, resulting in the winner's circle, a mark of 153 and one, just over $600,000 bankrolled. Her regular driver was Tim Tietrich this season, trained by Lucas Wallen, uh, bred by Hanover Shoe Farms, and Inez Ackerson uh, was the caretaker on her as well. Now back on September the 15th, let's take a look at Soiree Hanover winning the Jim Darney, which used to be a staple here at the Meadowlands, but now it moved out to Anderson, Indiana. Something I always loved watching about Soiree Hanover as well is she loved to track down horses, and sometimes it maybe put her just in a little bit of a tough spot if she got away too far back, but look at her here. She was able to hold off a nice Ponda title, uh, and even in the New Jersey Classic, I think people dismissed her there at the Big M, and she come from well off of the pace there in the Goldsmith May elimination. She actually did it on the front end. Unfortunate to make that miscue there in the final thing. Just really didn't go her way that night but looking forward to seeing her come back at the age of three as well yeah, and it's a pretty good duo tim tiedrick and lucas wallen of course they campaigned together with uh, uh with rebuff during the 2022 harness racing season soiree hanover is your winner in the two-year-old trotting philly division now let's get to glamour boy division one we're going to talk first and foremost i'm sorry we're going to go to the two-year-old pacing philly staying with the two-year-olds and uh, a horse who went nine for ten on the season didn't deliver in the big one, but delivered every other time. The winner of the 2023 Dan Patch for the two-year-old pacing fillies is Geocentric. She is uh, campaign campaigned by Brian Brown, another uh, drive here for Tim Tiedrich. That was her regular uh, driver. Ten starts, nine of those being wins. Her loss, her lone loss, came in the Breeders' Crown Final. She took a mark of 149 and three, bankrolled 556,000. She's a daughter of Sweet Lou. Uh, she was bred by Diamond Creek Farm. The caretaker is Ashley Dowish. She's owned by Milton, Jalen Lehman, Alan Keith, James Saubert, and Joe Sabraco. I mean, how about uh, the uh, poster girl for double eligibility in terms of sire stakes? Geocentric won the Kentucky and Pennsylvania sire stakes finals. And by winning those two races, Jess, accrued three hundred twenty six thousand dollars in earnings her loan loss as jessica alluded to was in the breeder's crown but that was after half to go after going to the half in 54 seconds flat yeah I, you know things just weren't wor working out in her favor that night either and take nothing away from my girl ej who also finished the end of her season on a strong note as well i think those uh nine wins from 10 starts really did connect with those people and you also have to uh you know realize it's not what you do for me now it's what you do all season long and she was there all season long and here you can see her at the red mile winning that kentucky sire stakes final strong 
strong on the front end. No question about it. And you see Tim Tiedrick just not even moving in the bike. Geocentric was just such a dynamo, winning each of her first nine starts in the season. Certainly a superstar campaign. Brian Brown, we know a lot about Brian. A couple of years ago, he had the superstars Fear the Dragon and Down by the Seaside. And believe me, the list for Brian Brown's great horses goes on and on and on. One of them certainly, Geocentric, who we look forward to seeing in the three-year-old Philly Pace Division during 2024. All right, let's move forward and talk about the horses who might be participating in next year's Glamour Boy Division, the two-year-old Pacing Colt Division, and the winner is Captain Albano with 107 votes, a landslide in this division. From nine starts this season, he hit the winner's circle seven times. He took a mark of 149 and two. This is a son of Captain Treacherous. Over 445,000 big rolled this season. His regular pilot was Todd McCarthy, trained by Noel Daly. Uh, Frederick Hedberg. <laughs> Kirkridge was the breeder on this one. Patricia Stable, LNA Express, uh, SJ Blom, and McMichael Dolan. And the caretaker, Sonia Booth, a, a horse that we were able to see, or not able to see here at the big end towards the end of the season. But he was also very quick off of his feet. I remember the Breeders' Crown elimination, and even in the Breeders' Crown final when he got tracked down. Uh, looking forward to seeing maybe the uh, Road to the Meadowlands Space winner book here in a couple of weeks to see where this guy would rank. Yeah, Captain Abano is certainly going to be very high up on the pole, if not number one. And I'll be putting that together next week or the week after. During 2023, Captain Albano was an absolute Pennsylvania Sire Stakes killer, and he won the Keystone State's $252,000 final. Settled for second best in the Breeders' Crown to Gem Quality, but had a clear resume edge over the rest of the field, even though we didn't see an awful lot of them on this coast. But clearly, um, Captain Albano was one heck of a two-year-old pacing goal. Here he is at the Red Mile, gunning down Newsroom, who is undefeated for the first part of his season as well. And Tom McCarthy just kept him, you know, under task there near the wire, and he just won it with ease. All right, so Captain Albano, we just saw win the Bluegrass, and I'm sure that his connections will be looking forward to many more stakes victories in the coming year. All right. That wraps up the two-year-olds. Jessica and I, we're going to take a 60-second timeout. And when we come back, we'll talk about the three-year-old Dan Patch Divisional winners for 2023. Come on. I want sales reports on my desk by Monday. Whoops. My bad. Love racing? RTN brings you every live simulcast on your home television, plus live video streaming and race replays on your PC and mobile devices. To order, visit RTN.TV. RTN, a breed apart. Welcome back, everybody. Alongside Jess Scott and Dave Little with you with a look at our second block of the 12 Dan Patch Equine Award winners for 2023. We're now going to talk about the three-year-olds. And when you want to talk about superstars in the sport, we're going to start with one right here. The three-year-old trotting cult division, no surprise, and the winner is. Tactical approach. The efforts that he had put up all season long, and you know, just to name a few, the Hamiltonian, the Kentucky Futurity, the, um, the, the Breeders' the Crown, Breeders Crown, and of course finishing second and against Olders in the FanDuel Championship. This is another son of tactical landing out of the Mayor Sarsi. 19 starts this season, 10 of those resulting in the winner's circle. He took a mark of 150 and won 1 1.5 million dollars in the bank this season his regular pilot is the driver of the year scott zeron trainer was nancy tactor uh bred by steve stewart in oakwood farms and the ownership group of robert leblanc john fielding joe sabraco and jaf racing and a fun group of owners to watch when this guy was on the or on the racetrack uh and cheering them on it was so fun to see that their reactions in the breeders crown uh final at hoosier park was fun to watch as well as at the hamiltonian you know in just a moment or so we'll see tactical landing winning the Hamiltonian that was from post 10 and in the Breeders Crown post 10 and in the Kentucky Futurity found room along the rail I thought Andy Miller had the race won yes uh, a lot of people thought that as well and a lot of people thought maybe he got quote lucky in a few of yeah, those right. races because he was able to squeeze up the inside but even in the Kentucky Futurity he uh, left aggressively off the gate and it just didn't work out until late in the mile when he was able to get up the rail but in the Breeders Crown he was third over so uh, it, it really didn't matter where he had him he's such a versatile horse it, it's got 
thought he could do whatever he wanted with him on the racetrack. And here you see here, everybody in the Hamiltonian pulled, saw fractions, and the money man was able to get him up the rail from post 10 at 12 to 1. Yeah, just remarkable uh, how the year kind of panned out for Scott Zaran. Obviously, also drove the outstanding three-year-old Cole Pacer, It's My Show. So, a uh, very deserved Driver of the Year award for Scott. And uh, tactical approach certainly played a big part in that. Yeah, Nancy had two tactical landing horses, Carl and tactical approach. And, of course, Jimmy trained a uh, tactical landing. So, big congratulations to everybody involved with tactical approach. Yeah, not surprisingly, 126 out of the 129 votes went to tactical approach. All right, let's talk about three-year-old trotting fillies. And Okus Fonstead, well, he's got a few good trotters in his barn. And one of them is the wonderful trotting filly by the name of Bond. Bond will take the Jam Patch Award for those three-year-old trotting fillies. This is a daughter of Southwind Frank. 13 starts this season. She had a little bit of a cold streak there, maybe in the middle part of the season, after being so strong in the first part and came back to win the Breeders' Crown. Uh, she faced the older mares uh, on FanDuel Championship night. She found the winner's circle eight times this season. She took a mark uh, this year of 151 and 2, 847,000 bankrolled. Aki was the driver on this one as well as the trainer, and he, of course, is the trainer of the year, him with along with the rest of his crew. He also co-owns this uh, filly with uh, Jeff Grell's Little E Stable in Elberg, bred by Diamond Creek Farm, and the caretaker is Steinholm. You know, it's just amazing when you saw horses like Bond and Jiggy Jog and all those trotters from the Swanstead barn. You just never expected them to lose. You know, you expect them to be ro robotical, just monsters. And yet during the course of the season, Bond still managed to hit the ticket in 11 of 13 starts and earned just a hair under $850,000. The vote wasn't close. Bond took a 121 out of the 129 ballots cast, missed a head in the Hamiltonian Oaks to have in Hanover, also took the elegant image, and lost to stablemate Jiggy Jog in the fan duel. Yes, yeah, she also took the Delmonica at uh, the Poconos as well. And we've seen her with plenty of speed on the front end. Uh, and then we're going to see her in the Breeders' Crown Final. She was able to work out a perfect pocket trip behind Special Way, getting up for the win. Uh, and a, de a deserving win, I think, because in a few of those starts in the season, she just was a little bit unlucky. The trip didn't work out for her, and it sure worked out for her here in the Breeders' Crown Final. Yeah, this is just a perfect two-hole trip, and uh, that was a good-looking win by Bond in the uh, in Breeders' Crown Elimination. A lifetime best, 151-2. and two. Congratulations to the Connections of Bond on copying the three-year-old Philly Trot Dan Patch Award. All right, let's move forward. After Bond, we go to the three-year-old Pacing Colt, and... Uh, well, this was a unanimous vote. It sure was. The Dan Patch Award for those three-year-old Colt and Gelding Pacers is going to go to Confederate, a horse that stayed on the top of the Horse of the Year pool all season long. Uh, he is a son of Sweet Lou. Fifteen starts for him this season, 13 of those resulting in the winner's circle. Of course, he had that one second place finish in the North America Cup. Things didn't work out for him on the FanDuel night when he took on the older Pacers from post-9. He bankrolled $1.6 million this season. He took a mark of 146 and one down at the Red Mile. His regular pilot this season and throughout his entire career is Tim Tietrick. Brett Pelling does the training on him, owned by Diamond Creek Racing, bred by Diamond Creek Farm. Jessica Shensky is the caretaker. And you know, Confederate was the type of horse chest that we came to think early in the season that maybe he needed to race off a helmet. But in the Meadowlands pace, as the rains came, he come first up and went right by for fun. It was so interesting to watch him all season because a lot of people thought that. And being able to go and talk to Brett, uh, you know, during the Meadowlands pace, in between the elimination and the final, he had nothing but great things to say about this horse and the way that a horse takes care of himself. He's so handy on the racetrack. The trips just kind of worked out for him to come from off the pace in a few of those races. And again, he can track down horses really nicely. And if you go back to the Red Mile race when he had post nine, he was parked to the half and pressure every step of the way before he drew away uh, winning that race and he had a little bit of a hiccup during the week just showed how tremendous of a horse he is yeah 14 starts on the season versus three-year-olds 13 wins and here he is in the Meadowlands pace showing his heels to the field and it was such a you know a tremendous victory for him for his connections Diamond Creek uh, racing uh, owning him Diamond Creek breeding him Timmy T getting another uh, Meadowlands pace trophy in his trophy case along with Brett Pelling yeah Brett Pelling now with five Meadowlands pace victories and uh, certainly one of the great trainers in the history of the game. Loves the pace, as does Tim Tietrich. Confederate 
a unanimous winner of the Dan Patch Award for three-year-old pacing Colts. All right, let's continue to move forward and talk about the three-year-old pacing Phillies. And this Philly Jess, to me, was just remarkable in the way that she won races. You would think that she couldn't get there, and yet she just keep on coming first up. I'm talking, of course, about the magnificent Sylvia Hanover. The 2023 Dan Patch Award for the three-year-old pacing Phillies goes to Sylvia Hanover. Back-to-back -back Dan Patch Awards for this Philly by Always Be Mickey. Ten wins from 13 starts this season. A mark of 148 and one on the season. $767,000 bankrolled. Her regular pilot was Bob McClure, trained by Sean Stacy. Owned by Hudson Standard Bread. Hanover Shoe Farms bred this filly. Natasha Stacy, the caretaker. And I always go back to the mistletoe chalet when she was parked every step of the mile, looped three wide up the backside, had cover, grabbed onto the bit again, and then ended up coming back to beat Twin GP Joe Fresh late in the mile. The way she just did these races, or won these races, was so incredible. She gave me a little bit of, I guess, gray hair, I guess you could say. This is the mistletoe chalet I'm talking about. Uh, just tremendous the way she did this. And the thing of it is, you know, this was kind of a, a, a kind of a different way for her to win. You know, snapping off cover and you know, and and uh, you know, pacing strong to the wire. Whereas we're used to seeing her come first up and it looked like it was hopeless and then she would just dig in again like for Bob McClure. Like the Breeders' Crown final. Exactly. I, I, I swear I thought she was done around the last turn right. when I was watching that race and she somehow, some way, dug in and you just don't really teach horses or you can't teach a horse to love to win and that's exactly what she does. She loves winning. Really excited to see her back next year along with Twin Beat Joe Fresh. I think it's going to be a really nice uh, mare, uh, open mare pacing uh, you know, division. Yeah, Sylvia Hanover copped 105 of the, uh, of the votes and Twin Beat Joe Fresh, who had a spectacular season, as you alluded to, Absolutely. 21 votes. So that's going to be a great matchup for next yeah, year. And I honestly thought the voting would maybe be a little bit closer. I thought Twinby Joe Fresh's win against the older pacing mayors at the end of the season would maybe account for a little more. Uh, now, mind you, maybe it wasn't the strongest field of open pacing mayors that we had seen all season, but I just think the way she did it and kicked off cover would have gotten her. But, but take nothing away from Twinby Joe Fresh. Take nothing away from Sylvia Hanover. Two phenomenal Phillies that we had the privilege of watching all season long. Yeah, and Twinby Joe Fresh obviously became the first three-year-old pacing filly to beat older in the FanDuel this year. So that's a special horse from Chris Ryder. And once again, we look forward to seeing them go head-to-head -head in 2024. All right, that's it for the three-year-olds. But when we return after this next time out, we're going to talk about the older pacers and the older trotters. My grandfather instilled in me that there's no such thing as luck. He said luck is where hard work meets opportunity. Welcome back, everybody, to the Sam McKee Memorial Broadcast set alongside Jessica and Dave Little with you as we continue to roll through the 12 Dan Patch Equine Award winners for 2023. I guess there are really no surprises so far in the voting. Uh, do, do you think, Jess? I thought maybe TCI and Carl would be a little closer, yeah. uh, and I also thought Twin B. Joe Fresh and Sylvia Hanover would be a little closer as well. Right, but I think as far as divisions go, I think that uh, it certainly wouldn't have been shocking to see TCI win, whereas no. Twin B. Joe right. Fresh over Sylvia Hanover would have been a Maybe a little bit, yeah. I, you know, I like I said, I, I really thought the the two-year-old trotting colts would be a little bit closer, and I really thought it could go the other way. All right, let's get to the older set. Let's begin with the older trotting mares, and this is a horse who I think is going to go down, reminiscent of the uh, uh, of the Atlantas of the world and the Manchegos of the world. I talk, of course, of uh, another Oka Svonsted trainee, and that Oka Svonsted trainee is. Boom. It'll be Jiggy Jog takes the 2023 Dan Patch Award for the older trotting mares, a daughter of Walner out of Hot Mess Hanover. Eight wins from 11 starts this season. Three uh, second place finishes. A seasonal mark of 150 and three over a million dollars in the bank. Her primary driver this season was Dexter Dunn, trained by the trainer of the year, Aki Svonsted. Uh, and a, tre a tremendous 
season she had, Dave, is she had beaten, been beaten those uh, three times to another very nice mare in MM Stream. Uh, but she had a very strong beginning of the season taking on the boys in the Hamiltonian, or excuse me, in the graduate before going on and getting beat in the Hamiltonian maturity. And then uh, coming back with a very, very solid end of her season. I mean, this was a horse, Jess, who early in the season before I became and we became aware of Confederate that I thought had the inside track on horse of the year and certainly Jiggy Jog S. I mean, how's this for a good year? Her slump was three straight second place finishes. Hamiltonian Maturity and the steal to MM's Dream, who was going great guns for Ron Berg at the time, and the International Trot to Vivid Wise Oss, who is the best trotter on the planet. Yeah, not so shabby uh, to get beat in those three uh, races there, like you had mentioned in the International Trot uh, to a horse that came over from uh, overseas. And she just really loves to track down horses. But if you see in this graduate final against the boys, she did it on the front end this night. So it just speaks volume to her versatility and how handy she can be on the racetrack. I mean, uh, once Dexter got her to the lead, boy, she just continued to trot and trot really, really strongly. 123 and four to three quarters. Home in 26 and 4 fifth seconds. I mean, how much better can you be than that? You know, and she was so fun to watch horse or to watch her track down horses. TVG and I were the end all night when she was, you know, sitting slightly off the pace and just tracked him down. She just does it with such ease. She covers the ground so nicely. Another horse uh, that it will be back next year too, and so really looking forward to that in the open uh, trotting mare division. Yeah, and that's why Jiggy Jog can go down in my estimation as a horse of the Atlantas and the Manchegos because when you race in that five-year-old campaign, you really see what you got in terms of a horse who goes up against the males and defeat them with regularity and I think Jiggy Jog is the type of horse who could do that. I think so too and a lot of times the four-year-old year can be used for transitioning you know, especially the first half of the season maybe not so much the second half of the season but definitely that first half and it does take them maybe you know the whole season to get used to racing against the olders but I think at the age of five where she could take on the older uh, open trotters I think she is definitely capable of beating them. Well if her four-year-old season was a transitional season then Katie bar the door look out for Jiggy Jog at five during 2024. All right, let's talk now about the aged pacing mare division. And the winner there, a horse who had a good season from start to finish, the Roses are Red Dayton Distaff winner. It is Grace Hill who takes the trophy for aged pacing The mare. 2023 Dan Patch Award goes to Grace Hill, another daughter by Always Be Misty, Miss Always Be Mickey out of Western Silk. 10 wins from 15 starts this season, a seasonal mark of 147 and 4, bankrolled 573,000. Uh, she had a couple of drivers on her this season, a regular pilot being Doug McNair and Tony Hall in Ohio, trained by Virgil Morgan Drew, Jr., owned by Mr. Tom Hill, bred by Whitebridge Farm, and her caretaker was Kevin Gapton. And like you had mentioned, uh, Dave, she went on a, a, a roll there in the beginning of the season. Won a few Phillies and Mares Opens at Scioto Downs. Went up to Woodbine Mohawk Park. Won the Roses Are Red elimination. Came back to win the final. A big night for Doug McNair there. Was second in the perfect sting in the Dorothy Howe. And went back to win the Cleopatra at Scioto Downs. Third in the Lady Liberty. A few more open uh, wins there in the Paces. A win in the Milton. A win in the Dayton Distaff for open pair Mare Pacers. A win in the Alaraj Farm. And then maybe just got a bit tired at the end of the season uh, after a fourth in the Breeders' Crown elimination and getting no money in the Breeders' Crown final. But nonetheless, like I had mentioned, her season as an overall was very strong. Yeah, there, you know, there certainly isn't quite as much opportunity for horses like this, but we do have the Grace Hills of the world. We do have the max contracts of the world. But how about Grace Hill winning the Roses of Red up in Ontario? And a lot of people, I think, I know she was even money favorite here, but I think a lot of people were also leaning towards Stretcher's Dragon earlier on in the season. Uh, plus you had a horses like Kobe's Gigi, Silver Label, so much more, who is a, a big Canadian uh, queen up there, you can say. But a great night for Doug McNair, too, after being involved in that incident there, to bounce back like 20 to 30 minutes later and get that adrenaline going to win the Roses Are Red there. Uh, another horse who is just so quick off of the gate, so quick on her feet. Uh, so a big congratulations to Grace Hill and all of her connections. Yeah, and an honorable mention to Silver Label, who recorded a couple of big victories during the year, and of course the aforementioned Max Contract for Team Orange Crush, but the top age pacing mayor in Harness Racing in 2023 is Grace Hill. All right, let's get to the next to last award winner on our list. It is the uh, for open pacing horses. So horses who are at least four years of age or older. What a hard hitting division. Of course, we remember last year, the great Bulldog Hanover, who put up a 145 and four mile during a fantastic campaign. This year, we had a couple of horses duke it out, but in the end, the winner was? 
by the Missile. The Dan Patch for the older Pacers award goes to by the Missile. This is a son of down by the seaside out of dismissal. 16 starts this season, 11 of those resulting in the winner's circle. A season, a mark of 147 and one, just under a million dollars made this season. His regular pilot, Yannick Jingra, trained by Ron Burke, owned by Burke Racing, Eric Good, Rich Lombardo Racing, and Weaver Bruce Simmery, bred by Stephen Dye. Caretaker is Daisy Brown. And what a tremendous job by Ronnie, his crew, his vets after the Juravinsky elimination up in Canada. The horse got very sick. They took their time. They gave him as plenty of time off as he needed to come back and finish the season as strong as he did. And he's a gelding, so we're going to see him for years to come. You know, this is a division that included the likes of Tattoo Hanover, who went on absolute roll for Dr. Ian Moore during the course of the season. By the Missile overcame that one. Alleywag Hanover emerged from the inside to win the fan duel in outrageous fashion. But, but you know, yeah, week in and week out, it was by the Missile duking it out to get victories in the Potomac and the Alarage and the Aria at a mile and a quarter at Yonkers Raceway. Yeah, and in the Potomac, too, that was also a track record there for four-year-old geldings uh, down at Rosecroft. It was a perfect drive by Yannick and the Breeders' Crown to push to Tattoo Artist wide fast early on in the mile and sit behind him in the pocket and then pounce on him late in the stretch. He's such a versatile horse as well. Uh, he can come from off the base. He can do it on the front end. You're going to see him here uh, in the Breeders' Crown final. If you see him right on the inside, you see the back of the annex colors. He was able to sit on Tattoo Artist's back before having to pull uh, you know, midway through the stretch. People forget how long that Harris Hoosier Park stretch is. And Yannick just had to call him in a bit and keep his attention, and he paced home strongly. Yeah, by the missile, just a what a performance during the course of the season. Just under a million dollars earned, but when you add in last year's over a million dollar campaign, you get a two year span in which By the Missile earned over two million dollars for the Burke Brigade. Congratulations to those connections. By the Missile is the open pacer for 2023. Now, just one to go. It is for the older trotters, and we had uh, some very nice ones in here. We had South Winterian, we had It's Academic, but one of them reigns supreme over the long haul of the season, and the winner is It's Academic. The 2023 Dan Patch Award for the older trotters, the open trotters, is It's Academic. This is a son by all uh, by Uncle Peter. 18 starts this season, eight of those resulting in the winner's circle, $951,000 bank. His regular pilot, David Miller, trained by Ron Burke, owned by Brad Grant, uh, taken care of by the caretaker of the year, Margaret Gillian, and bred by GBW Breeding Farms. And I was, you know, this is another one where I thought the division maybe was going to go one way or the other because South Winterian was very strong at the end of the season, but it's not what you've done for me lately. It's what you've done all season long. And after a year last year, we just run into a little bit of bad luck, bad posts. I had to overcome a lot of uh, maybe bad trips, outside posts, and he danced all the big dances last year. For him to come back this season and have such a breakthrough season um, coming off of, you know, the Ohio circuit, just to show you what the Ohio horses have done over the course of the last couple of years. He was so strong all season long. He went the fastest trotting mile ever in the Caesars Trotting Classic. He's such a cool little horse to be around too when you're out there watching him warm up or going to the farms and visiting horses. So big congratulations to its academic and all of his connections as well. Yeah, the Aldrich, the Spirit of Massachusetts and the Crawford are up on his mantle case as is the footage we're about to see. Cashman from way back, that's its academic, coming to beat South Winterian. And Venerate, he was on Venerate's back there late in the stretch. It didn't work out in his favor in the Cutler. Uh, Venerate got the jump on him then, but you know, South Winterian was coming up the outside. He was had Venerate uh, next to him, and he was able to get up by a nose at the wire. A little bit of an upset there uh, at 5-2, to two, but winning in 151-2. and two. Uh, You know, like I said, he was a fun horse to watch. He was another one who could do it on the front end. You could take him off the gate and hopefully not get too far away back, but he could track down horses very well as well. Yeah, I know for me personally that I didn't want to get too wrapped up in how good South Winterian was late in the season right. just because its academic was good from start to finish. And what I didn't realize until I got down and, and crunched some of the numbers is that from 18 starts going up against the very best trotters you can find anywhere, 16 out of the 18, its academic hit the board. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, even in his losses, he still raced well. In the Breeders' Crown final, he was second. In the Breeders' Crown elimination, he was third. In the Alarage, that would probably hit his worst race of the season maybe. Uh, you know, but everybody has a bad day once in a while. And for him to be so consistent all season long from the open races in the beginning of the season, transitioning into the Grand Circuit races and having to travel too. People forget how, you know, gruesome traveling all over the country to Canada, down to Lexington, to Ohio, back to Jersey, over to Hoosier. It's a lot on those horses all season long. And for him to have 18 starts from start to finish and be as sharp as he was, kudos to his crew.
All right, that brings the curtain down on the 12 Dan Patch Equine Award winners. But we can't reveal Pacer of the Year, Trotter of the Year, or Horse of the Year. That will be revealed in about two months. Where and when can we see this? It will be February 25th this year at the Rosen Center in Orlando, Florida. And if you want to join us down in Florida on February the 25th, head to www.usharnessraiders.com. That is when we'll find out the Horse of the Year, the Trotter of the Year, and the Pacer of the Year. Yeah, it certainly is uh, going to be an awful lot of fun. I know that Jessica's going to be working the dinner alongside me, so it's always a lot of fun for us to get a little bit of a holiday from here just to get in that warm sunshine and see everybody in harness racing who's anybody in harness racing. Thanks so much for tuning us in and checking out our Dan Patch Equine Awards show. Jessica and I are going to take a break now, and when we return, we're going to talk about tonight's featured action here at the Meadowlands. Good evening, racing fans, and once again, welcome to Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment. At this time, would everyone please stand and gentlemen, remove your caps as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Yeah. 